There we go. Um, so yeah, welcome to the November community chat. We're going to talk about Ghost, the uh, blogging newsletter um, platform. Um, and um, this is uh, very much connected to, related to the uh, Flux course that we're also running on Ghost, which is in its last week this week, actually just the last session just premiered. Um, and um, uh, in that session, Pilot and Jim went through all of the details and minutia of setting up the email stuff which can be kind of weird to get used to if you've never done it before. But um, if you've ever had to set up mail, like a mass mail type application manually before, you will probably appreciate how comparatively simple it is with something like Mailgun and Ghost. Um, but if you haven't, it can be pretty intimidating. Um, so that was cool to kind of see um, that that done and um, pilot went through like importing users and all the specific ghost um dashboard stuff there but um but yeah we've spent kind of the month or um first half of the month i guess um kind of chatting about what ghost is what it's good for um and i think that the conversation is timely as well um for a lot of reasons um so on the one hand it's very untimely because we really should have done this in october um that would have been an awesome halloween themed flex course but whatever um <laughs> we didn't think of that um i, I we weren't in the right mindset there we, um, but had, we were busy enough with the wordpress multi-site yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we did technically start it on October 31st. And by technically, I mean, I put the first blog post up. So there's, there's that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so in that way, it was very untimely. But, um, but time, what I mean by that is, we, um, there's a couple things happening. And I mean, you don't have to go far in our community chat, history backlog of recordings to find people saying, you know, WordPress is changing in these ways. There's been people who have been concerned about some things. I don't really personally like putting up tools, like standing them up against each other and being like, yes, you should move from this to this. Cause like go, one of the things we explore a lot throughout this course and we'll talk about today is like ghost doesn't do the same things as WordPress. Um, it really does like one, maybe two things. It does those things, I think, very well. Um, and that's it. Whereas WordPress has, as we all know, I think a ton of functionality, a lot of different things you can do with it. It runs in almost any environment. Ghost is very specific requirements needed to run it. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of different things that I don't think make it make sense to compare it in like a checklist way, but do maybe make sense to think of it in a more like, well, how does this application fit into my ecosystem of tools that I may want to use for a purpose? Not so much a technical showdown, if that makes sense. Um, so that that's kind of how I like to think of it. I think um, I think Ghost is, a, is an interesting tool to know about. Um, and we're trying a lot, spend a lot of time here at Reclaim making it um, easier to use, easier to run, um, cheaper to run to, um, and all kinds of stuff. So um, before we get into some more of the minutia and things, and while we kind of kick the conversation off, I did want to just kind of take a step back for a second and um, kind of share my screen and just chat a little bit generally about what ghost is um and and what it what it's good for um the uh so let me just share my screen here cool um so um if you're not familiar ghost is a uh blogging tool not unlike uh wordpress in some ways um one of the ways it is very similar uh, to WordPress is that it is open source, but there is a company behind it that sells hosting for it as well. So um, they have a service called Ghost Pro, um, where you know you can sign up for a blog um, that they host. Um, and uh, one difference, though, with Ghost Pro is there's no free um, option for it. Um, it starts at about nine bucks a month to host with them, but it is a somewhat limited feature set for that nine bucks a month. Again, kind of like WordPress.com and WordPress.org. WordPress.com 
is uh, simple to get started with. Um, and you can, you know, for not too much money, map a custom domain, but um, it doesn't start with all the functionality you can get in the full blown self hosted WordPress. Um, but uh, but th there is that kind of um, natural, uh, you know, similarity between the two. Um, the one thing to know about right off the bat is Ghost has very specific way uh, and have places you have to run it in. So WordPress will run on pretty much anything LAMP, LAMP environment. That's why we can run it on Domain One's own and shared hosting. Um, you know, to run WordPress, you need a modern version of PHP, a web server like Apache, and a database. It needs to be MySQL or MariaDB. Although I was actually watching recently an interview with Matt Mullenweg, and it sounds like WordPress might be getting support for SQLite as a database in the future, which is kind of interesting. But um, it's kind of it would be like a lower performance thing. I'm not really sure why you'd want to use SQLite, but I guess options are good. Um, so Ghost, on the other hand, has specific requirements. Officially, they support it on Ubuntu um, and these specific versions. Uh, these are all the long-term support versions. You need to use MySQL as your database. They used to support SQLite, um, but they actually dropped support for that uh, just recently. You need Node.js. And uh, it also has to run as like a system service. So the system service thing and Node.js is kind of why we can't really, in a clean way, offer it in shared hosting. There was a time where um, we were using a tool called Cloud Linux to enable that. But speaking as someone who, who used Ghost on Cloud Linux, it was very difficult to maintain. And um, I never successfully upgraded it. Um, I just never quite figured it out. So it wasn't really a great fit, um, even when it could kind of work. Also, performance was pretty pretty rough um, in that. So, so for that, we turn to Reclaim Cloud, where you can kind of have a lot more flexibility on what you run. Um, and we made an installer. So we have uh, documented in our support uh, knowledge base uh, whoops, I need to figure all here. Um, we do have documented in our support knowledge base um, how to get started with Ghost on Reclaim Cloud if this is something you want to try out. Uh, we have an installer. You really just go sign in to Reclaim Cloud, go to Marketplace, click Ghost, um, name your environment, and then it's going to kind of take you from there to this page we're looking at right now and say, all right, you need to map a domain name and you're, 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 there you go. So everything else updates, setting up mail for newsletters and changing your domain name, doing HTTPS stuff. All of that is kind of handled for you and you can go in the add-ons menu so you, to configure it. So you really don't need to use a terminal at all. It's kind of the goal, um, which is very much not the case for most ghost hosting. Uh, usually, um, you, like you could run ghost on like AWS or DigitalOcean, but you will have to kind of manually administer it via the command line, um, which isn't the end of the world, but um, really trying to make this as simple as possible to, to use. Um, so um, that's kind of how we would recommend people run it. Um, we recent, I recently did some work with our installer to really tune the amount of memory it uses. So it uses about three cloudlets uh, on a new install, um, which means it, it would run about nine bucks a month. And then you need an IP address. So that's another $3. So it's, it's like just under $12 a month. Um, basically to run it. So it's, you know, um, not going to be as quite as, as um, economically effective, let's call it. It's not gonna be as cheap as, you know, a shared hosting account. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of it. But we are trying to get it to be, you know, in the realm of um, pretty affordable. Um, so that's kind of how it lives in the Reclaim ecosystem. But um, what I kind of wanted to talk about spend probably the most time talking about it is sort of what's good for, um, why you may want to even think about it for certain use cases, um, newsletters being a big one. Like I said, we just did a whole course, flex course on newsletters with it. And um, yeah, even some of the 
I, some of the things around the company I think are kind of interesting. Like it's a pretty small company um, and they have a, a kind of awesome introduction page, if you're ever curious, that goes through sort of um, how they, so, you know, basics about what Ghost is, but also how it got started. Like Ghost was started as a Kickstarter that they basically said, we want to make this tool and, uh, and then when we're done with it, we'll release it into uh, open source so that anyone can run it. In fact, the Kickstarter page is still up, which I think is interesting. Um, and um, so it, it's got a, you know, uh, kind of humble beginning, I guess, you know, so did WordPress too. Um, but um, I, if, I think very interesting is I think at the start a very reactionary kind of like, hey, there aren't tools that are simple in this way. We have an idea of this elegant publishing tool that we want to exist. So that's how they did it. So I would kind of find that very interesting. Um, but yeah, um, I kind of wanted to um, chat about sort of like what it's good for. You know, we use it at Reclaim, what we like about it. I kind of want to field questions from folks about using it or why you'd want to use it. Um, and I also want to make sure I don't literally talk through this entire community chat. So I'm going to kind of take a pause for a second before we, you know, uh, can go through and just see like, I don't know, ha do folks have uh, experience using it? Questions, doubts at this point about what Ghost is? And how did and what it's good for? While there's a, a vacuum, I'll I'll fill it. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting because Pilot and I just finished up the third part of the Ghost course, and one of the things that I found that is an applicable not only to Ghost, which we use in a very focused way, and we talked about small tools that do a job well, like a newsletter and an elegant thing with Ghost. But the other thing is with Ghost, you have to figure out transactional email, which is a thing for many applications now that don't run in cPanel. Mastodon being a more recent popular example, if you're running a server, Discourse, which is the forum um, uh, application. And Ghost was the first time in 2014, I think, when I started running it with Tim, I came up against that. And that, for me, as a technologist, was a learning curve. I was like, oh, wait, there's a whole new way of running email. And I think that's one of the things, at least on the technical side, with Ghost is what was interesting is it kind of gave me an insight into how this application was running differently, not to mention no search, no comments. Like a lot of stuff came post facto, but it was a very kind of stripped down, simple tool, um, which is the opposite direction i think of a tool like wordpress that had been so good at doing so many things because of its community so it's an interesting tale of two tools in some ways yeah i see it's so i forgot i, I had set up like it's timely for two reasons the other big reason for me not just because people are talking a lot about like wordpress full site editing and like set aside like where that is at because we've talked about that a lot in community chats and I think, um, you know, like my kind of stance is like, it's interesting, but needs a lot of work. You know, wherever, wherever you think about that, it does definitely show like, this is a direction that WordPress as a organization community, open source, you know, community is going, right? Um, and I think, so that's one thing. But I think the other thing is Ghost has sort of, in like the last year kind of added a lot of pieces of functionality search being one of them but now there is search <laughs> built into ghost there was no search before the only way to do it was to use like to link in external uh tools and it, from what i've read and experimented with the search is pretty good like it's not um just a basic it'll look for titles of things it's a full text search and like a decent uh built-in option and then the other one is commenting, which I think is actually huge um, because uh, before then you had to use a link in an external service like Discuss or um, there's um, Cactus Comments is one. And those weren't hard to set up necessarily, but it is rough in that most of those are 
either something you have to separately host, like in its own, say, Reclaim Cloud environment or on a different virtual machine, or you have to pay for or use a free service. Like, so I use Discuss comments on my blog, and it's something long term I want to get rid of because they're an ad tracking company. Like, that's how they make money, and I I don't want that to be part of my blog. Um, so having that built into Ghost, I think, is huge. Probably even bigger than Search for me personally. Um, so, and it's it's um, not you know terribly flexible like the way commenting works in Ghost is. You can turn it on, and people have to make like submit their email address and they get a uh, confirmation link back to them. And that's just how it works. And I don't know that there's a lot of, um, I don't know that there's a lot of um, configurability beyond that. You can't say, you can't make it, um, you know, so that people don't have to submit their email. Like it's just how it is because I think they're not really, they don't have like anti-spam built in like a kismet. They don't really have that functionality built in. So there could be reasons why you'd still want to use a third-party service. Um, but I think having that there right from the start is a huge deal. Um, yeah, um, we should look into adding the search button. I think it's there on the Roundup, Ed. You said it'd be great when Roundup has search. I think we really just need a link to it, um, but I have to double check. We may, also, we may also need to upgrade that instance too. Yeah. So. One of the other things about the Roundup specifically is that the theme that we've picked is really nice and clean, but by default, it hides a couple of features. And I would not be surprised if... Uh, search is one of them, or if commenting is one of them. And so that's something that we would have to, as Taylor's saying, go in and link to. Yeah, one uh, of the things with it is um, themes and Ghost are somewhat simple. Um, and they don't have, they, they aren't as tied to the functionality of a site as they are in WordPress. Because okay. it's not really like code that Ghost is running in the way a WordPress theme is PHP code that is happening to display your site. Ghost is kind of just merging in to what are essentially HTML files, the content. So you can use like a really old Ghost theme on a really new version of Ghost in certain instances and not really have any issues. But we may actually just need to go update our theme right in the theme browser. Uh, one of the things that's kind of rough about our Roundup instance is um, it kind of predates our Ghost installer that I spent a lot of time. So a lot of the easy update stuff is not there. So we we have we we are subject to the command line for our stuff. But um, but mostly I just I mean it's it's not actually that difficult to to do the updates even manually. But um, it's got to take time to do it. Um, but yeah, it's it's um we should get that set up. That would be really good. It would be interesting to see if people actually comment once we get comments. I mean, search makes a lot of sense, I agree. But like if and when we put comments in it, like I think in general the web has moved away from commenting on blogs and that kind of space more generally. I, I if that were to be kind of a thing again, I would obviously think that would be awesome but it'll be interesting just over time to see you know because there's so much in a newsletter um at least the reclaim roundup that commenting would seem almost like what are you commenting on almost be more like you would have to do a kind of uh what would you call it an annotation <laughs> yeah that, well and i was gonna say it might be interesting for us right like we have more than one place people can you know communicate with us right so it may be interesting to instead of using ghost comments that we instead link to like a special forum post and say, Hey, we can discuss the newsletter over here or something like that. Like there's a lot of ways to handle that because we already have a forum or it could say, you know, here's a special discord channel. Like there's a lot of different ways to do that. I think in, obviously we could also enable comments in ghost um, and maybe even do both if we wanted to, but that is a good point. I, I actually really like that. That'd be really interesting. It's like, let's use hypothesis for commenting. Just everyone here, click this and it'll open that. Um, <laughs> it would be something. But uh, it'd be kind of cool to have like some kind of self-hosted commenting system that worked like that. But um, that's another, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I do think... Um, 
one of the um one of my favorite things about the the roundup is and this is like a small tiny thing that just ghost does really well is it is sort of very unfussy once you have ghost happen like you you we 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 have ghosts installed you know pilot does a lot of work to make the roundup happen and i know jim you you do some of that as well a little bit um but overall ghost kind of just is fast and does its thing in the background and we don't really think a lot about it um which is kind of great because we have plenty of other you know uh wordpress sites and other sites and servers and things to keep going um and you know the the it's not like our newsletter is enormous or anything but we it does get sent out to a decent amount of people and it does get a, a decent amount of traffic and ghost kind of just stays fast the whole time uh mm -hmm. in so that's that's kind of cool um we don't really have to do haven't really even considered that <laughs> throughout the process so I think uh, for me, uh, it's a very interesting discussion, and I haven't. Um, I have to go back and watch the the ghost session, so I'm looking forward to that. But the, the whole, I mean, the the use case of of an email newsletter is is one we're really um, think we want to implement here at, at our place, and um, because it seems that that's how we could probably best reach our faculty. And I know there are other offices on campus um, and development and careers and whatever um, who use newsletters, but I think they're probably just templates in Outlook or something like that. And so, but I'm interested in Ghost, it, um, particularly for this as a possibility. Of course, given our circumstances, we'd have to it has to be approved. It'd have to go through sure. the software approval process and all that. But um, yeah, Ed says they use Emma. I don't know that we have a campus wide um, platform as such. Uh, I'd be curious to kind of broaden it too, to see what other schools, I mean, not just the, the platform for the newsletter, but the practice, you know, what's the content, how do you, how, did, how, is, how is it part of your larger strategy? And I really appreciate when schools like Middlebury put theirs out and you can subscribe. So I get, I think they call it the dirt and I'm not, I'm not sure what platform it's on. Um, and uh, Derek Bruff, who used to be at Vanderbilt and now has his own personal kind of newsletter. I think it's on something called ConvertKit. Um, but yeah, I mean, we would like to, to start putting out something like that. And so if Ghost is, you know, one of the is an attractive option. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested in it at least for that use case. One of the things I think is not every platform does this very well, and it's one of the reasons I like Ghost. But also, like on the proprietary side, Substack is is one that does do this too. Is I personally feel it's important to have a newsletter that you know arrives in people's inboxes, of course, but also lives as a URL that you can point to because i think it, it at least for us at reclaim it happens a lot but i've seen it in, in other avenues and places too where it, it can be really handy to be like yeah we talked about that and just send a link and say a tweet or whatever you know um or even just to tell people you can go to the round roundup.reclaimhosting.com and go there because um some people don't like per like i do not sign up for newsletters personally I sign up for the reclaim one. It's a little different for me, obviously, but like I don't sign up for newsletters because I am on a mission at any time to absolutely eliminate the amount of email that is like automatic. That isn't stuff from people that I need to respond to. So I do newsletters in an RSS reader, right? Like I go to whatever newsletter and usually if they have a website, you can also just do it in, in an RSS reader that works for me. Um, so I, I personally think have that open web component is is really important if um, but not every single tool allows for that. So um, even you know like uh, say Mailchimp, which we use for different types of things, not really newsletters, um, does have the ability to give a link to the email as well, which is kind of nice.
Yeah, I was just I linked to the Duke's newsletter, which is one of the ones that comes into my mailbox. And that I was like, oh, that's a good overview of their stuff and gave me some early ideas for Reclaim Roundup. But to your point, Taylor, there's no place you can link to just see their newsletter. You have to get it delivered to your email. I would love it if it was just like a link to a, um, a site too, so that if someone mm -hmm. linked it to me, I could see it. But Mo, thanks for that dirt on the dirt. That's new to me and I will subscribe. Yeah, okay. and so it's interesting. So it looks like they do use Emma. Uh, looking at the URL, yeah, um, it looks like that too. I don't know if 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 Tom if Tom Woodward's involved in that. Maybe not, since it's you know he's probably got all kind of other things on his plate there. But um, but it's yeah. I mean, it, uh, I I appreciate getting it and see what seeing what they're doing and how they're kind of reaching out to their faculty in that way and their other users. But yeah. So you know, and I I haven't used Emma. I have used. Um, kind of a couple other a couple other platforms and I'm like familiar with Substack but I will say that one of the reasons why we've been so jazzed about Ghost is that it makes a lot of these kinds of things of I'm like okay well we want to collect them in a blog it's like well you're writing a blog right like so that's done right that that is effectively done for you and then the other part which is the email integration part and where do I go? Um, you know, Mailgun is a proprietary service, right? Like they're, you're not hosting your own email, but one of the things we talk a lot about in the course, or at least comes up a lot is hosting your own email is even in cPanel problematic in a lot of ways, especially if you're going to do a large volume of email, right? So if you're going to be sending a lot and um, it's very, very normal and common as probably some domain of what zone admins have noticed too. If you're, if a single IP address that say isn't already on Google or Microsoft's radar sends out a bunch of email that goes through their service, you're just going to get blocked immediately. And then you have to appeal and get the IP removed. Um, so we have some recommendations and restrictions to avoid that. But at a certain point, that is the nature of it. And it's like, yeah, if you want to send out 600 emails at once for a newsletter, you, you're going to probably have a hard time with that if it's on uh, shared hosting or a single server of any kind, right? So um, that's where Mailgun kind of helps is that your Mailgun is a known entity by these email services like Microsoft Outlook and, and Google Workspace and stuff. And so you can leverage that tool to simply do the email part. And then Mailgun makes that pretty low cost. So um, it's free under a thousand emails per month, um, which is, I think, going to cover a lot, a lot of use cases. And then above that, this, the cost is still pretty low. You can either do like a pay as you go or uh, get like larger blocks. There's all kinds of different options. But um, and then ultimately, it's kind of done. Like there, you basically sign up for an account, you put a credential in the ghost, and it just happens and works. <laughs> um, so that I really like that kind of setup because you get to kind of own the infrastructure of the site using ghost, and you get to not own <laughs> the email part of it, which can be very tricky if you're doing large volume email. It's slash next to impossible, honestly, um, depending on the, the size. So um, I really like that setup. And you could do newsletters in WordPress, right? Like you could use uh, plugins in WordPress to do the newsletter stuff and Mailgun has an integration for WordPress. You can make that work. Um, most of the newsletter plugins aren't completely free in the way you'd want. And it would be a little bit of setup, but that would be possible. Um, but Looking at the the costs of some of the paid plugins and stuff, I actually think that Ghost with the Mailgun integration ends up being cheaper in most cases. So um, it's been cheaper and pretty easy to actually manage long term. Yeah, and I'd be interested too on that point, Mo um, and Larry and Ed, whether you have, you know, already some transactional email services your school are using. I know UVA for Domain of One's Own because that sends some email 
they wanted us to integrate with their um, mail gun settings so that we could send them cleanly. And that would be interesting too, because that would be, you could even pick, get clarified, like, hey, I'm going to use the newsletter. Let's just call it GrinnellNewsletter.com. And then you could send the email from that domain and it won't look spammed. And you could just say, you know, to the IT folks, clear this one, make sure it doesn't go into Barracuda. Like, I know you have to get permissions and I'm saying, but like with Mailgun, you could put in any domain. You know, it doesn't have to be Grinnell.edu or Stanford.edu. And that could work too. It can be a little tricky though, depending on the email setup at a school, right? Like, cause not ever like Barracuda is for hosted email. Well, it's not just for that anymore, but like there are often the, like, how do things end up in spam or not delivered at all in some cases with the age of where email is at right now is we're talking about many, many layers, right? Like from send to in someone's inbox at a, say an institution. So they can whitelist. And in a lot of cases that may help, but you may actually be signing up um, whoever's managing your email for a little bit more troubleshooting than that to actually make sure that it doesn't end up on a block list. Because if you end up on Google's block list, which isn't that hard to do, <laughs> um, it's a much, uh, maybe my, Microsoft might be, it seems like we have that um, with, uh, with Office 365 more often, but yeah. Yeah, to your point, um, Mo, so transactional email is basically like when you would have on a server an SMTP uh, function like cPanel does, where it sends the email from the server, which I think is to, to Taylor's point, like, you know, when you set up a WordPress on cPanel, it manages all the email for those simple transactional emails, like reset password, welcome email. A lot of these next generation applications don't integrate that into the server stack. So you have to do those emails on another service and you have to point those SMTP settings, which would lo be local usually for a server. So you wouldn't have to do anything now get pointed externally. And that's where a service like Mailgun, it's kind of different from MailChimp in that it's not like, here's your newsletter from start to finish. It's just like, here's your SMTP email settings put them in your application and go. So it's a little bit different in that it's just focusing on the mail exchange and the fact of mail getting blacklisted, it, absolutely. A lot of times you'll find that if the email from and your two are matching and you kind of figure out with someone, like you send it through Mailgun and it's fairly you know, consistent in that and you talk to folks and say, you know what, make sure this gets through you may have some luck with that. So I think, you know, mail, it's mail, whatever you do and however you do it and get permission, newsletters, I think are a pretty good way, whether online or connecting through email, like you said, Mo, to get in faculty's mailbox and for them to know what you're working on. Like, I think that's super that in and of itself is a really good strategic approach, whatever mm -hmm. tool you use to get there, right? We like Ghost because we host it and we kind of know it and it's open source, but there's a lot of ways at it. Totally. Um, I do kind of want to mention too, like why email is different in some of these applications. You mentioned that like in these some of these next gen applications, they don't have that built in. And that's because most of them were created in with the idea of them being hosted in a sort of more, I'll call it modular way, but that's maybe not completely accurate, but like WordPress and a lot of the tools in shared hosting and domain of one's own are very much thought of from the creation of them as you're going to be running this on a shared hosting, you know, in cPanel kind of environment. And that doesn't just mean that you have a web server available. It means you've got probably a host of other things happening right on that server, right? Um, something like Ghost was created right from the get-go of like, you're going to go to a digital ocean or to a reclaim cloud or to an AWS and make a little tiny server to run this one thing. And therefore you're not gonna have email on the same thing, probably. Um, so there are a lot of ways around that. Like we've just been talking about Mailgun a lot, but um, 
I kind of wanted to mention too, like recently this came up with someone who wanted to run Ghost on Recrain Cloud, but not for newsletters. They just wanted to run it for a blog. And they're asking, but like, how do I set up email not for newsletters? I do not want to use Mailgun. And um, you can also kind of mix and match. Like in that one, I mentioned that you can totally make a mail account in a cPanel account if you already have one and use that as your SMTP credentials. Or if you're working with an institution, you could probably work with IT to run your email through their SMTP. This is something I did a lot at SNC was we would actually run certain things through the like institution had a separate SMTP server that was set up properly. Um, so you don't have to use, you know, uh, necessarily a service like Mailgun for all of this. Um, and in fact, a lot of it you can do with a combination of cPanel, um, like I, I have in that, that forum uh, post, but, um, or, you know, you could, I guess, theoretically set up a mail server yourself um, and do that. Um, but, you know, then you get into a lot of the issues of maintaining it and stuff like that. But Are there safe and secure ways to use SMTP from WordPress? Yeah. Th so there, so like the, there are plugins that are, I, as far as I'm aware, safe and secure. Like um, wasn't uh, my, my story about this, like, wasn't like the Panama papers started with WordPress SMTP because the, because to make the plugin work, you had to have your password in the in the WordPress config file for your SMTP server. You have to have username and password. And so this law firm that was doing shady stuff had exposed that password that later gave them access to their email server, which like caused the downfall of like several world government leaders. Yeah. So I mean, you could set up SMTP that way, right? But there, so not every where you put those credentials is different in some cases, and uh, Larry's mentioning it here too. There's also sort of farther back ways in the stack to do it too. Like we have worked with folks to have, um, like, not just an individual WordPress install use SMTP, um, but then also where plugins store that is going to be differently. And then finally, there are a lot of things you can do, even if you were putting literal bare credentials in a WP config file. So like by, by default now, we have our WP config files are pretty locked down to only certain user accounts being able to even read them, not just write. Um, so there's that too. So it's kind of, I guess my point is, this isn't going to be like a satisfying answer, but it's sort of like, yes, it depends. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, that is something we actively recommend to folks in certain situations is you may want to consider using an SMTP setup for this. Um, and it begs the question, like Larry, your points are good there. Like Stanford has a certain amount of um, services set up. So Mo, it might make sense to just be like, you know, which one of the ones do you use to send out mail to X amount of people? And, you know, get that subdomain wherever you send it to or however they set it up and say, okay, those are the SMTP credentials I'll need for this account to send it out. And that might be something, you know, they're willing to do. Never easy, but definitely um, valuable to get it. And um, if that's what you want to do, because I think your, your inclination to send out emails to folks on the regular to announce what you're doing is a really good usage of of something like Ghost. Um, it's what we're doing with the newsletter and the roundup. It's been awesome. Yeah, and um, this, uh, thanks for linking that, Ed. Um, this is interesting. I, my not having read this yet, right? Just kind of thinking about what you described. Um, there are like a lot of failures, probably, <laughs> of the security of that. Because because you also want to think of like, okay, the credentials that are in this file, if they were found somehow by whatever method, what do they get access to, right? So are they getting access to send from an address and then we shut it down? Or do they have access to some privileged user on our SMTP? Um, do, are the database credentials that, you know, like there's a lot of different things in there. This is why you and and, and, and read that article, you'll, you'll find it interesting. Yeah, I'm um, going to later. For you know, sure. they, they say like, okay, even if you did use SMTP, they should have created an account that the only rights that they had were sending email 
and couldn't receive mail and couldn't use any of the other services on that email server. Yeah. If they had limited the rights of that account, then you know they would have still been fine. But they didn't. And so this other thing went wrong and it just goes along the cascade. You know, and it also points to like this firm was targeted because people knew that they were doing shady stuff. Like people worked really hard to get this, you know, going. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that that is that is interesting. I'll have to read that. I, I do like Revolution Slider caused the resignation of Iceland's Prime Minister. <laughs> did they have that in their plugin, like in the in the ratings <laughs> in the store? Um it's also worth noting, right? Like in terms of we work at a hosting company and we talked about it pilot a little bit during the third session, like running email or your own email is hard for all the reasons Taylor said, like getting blacklisted, trying to do this, that, and the other thing. Like if you could find an easy way to offload some of that, it's good because it is a powerful tool to communicate, but you know, running your own email server probably is going to be far more overhead than you ever wanted to run a newsletter. Um, but having all the resources that a school has, because they communicate via email already, it's just figuring to get into that crevice where they do so that you can use a tool like goes to whatever. So yeah, it's, it's interesting because email, you would think it's been around, but we were joking. It's still the killer app in a lot of ways, because for many of us in our day to day, that's where we go to work through our to-do lists or find out what we've been notified. So it is a good place to kind of promote what we're doing. Yeah. And also because domain of one's own is shared hosting that does have email options by default. A lot, a lot of most schools, I think, turn it off for the reasons that we're talking about, but I mean, I wouldn't recommend having your users run email through cPanel. For one, for all the reasons we're talking about, and two, because it's likely that there are other options, but that does exist. Yeah, and even that is a complicated thing to navigate too, in terms of like what are the risks of those tools being there. Like, um, I um, kind of, I think it depends on like what the, what is the project URL for your thing. Like, um, you know, if you if you're on a subdomain under your .edu. Um, you might think differently about <laughs> what those email addresses look like and all that stuff um, than, than someone who's got a totally different URL, maybe harder to mix up with official looking college email and stuff like that. Also, even like how things get through spam and don't like, um, you know, uh, yeah, there's a lot of considerations there. I, I always kind of liked leaving those tools enabled because I like the idea that folks can play with them and and do things like we were saying, like, oh, I want to have a ghost blog or some other thing, and I'm going to use cPanel to you know, do the email part, and I can just kind of click and make an account, and that's relatively simple to manage. Um, but you don't definitely don't want to get too close to... Um, Cause, cause right. Cause like ultimately anyone can go make a mail account uh, on any domain name that isn't one that you control anyway. So you're always running that risk of like, we want people to be able to play in this space um, without opening anyone up to, to risk that is unreasonable. So cool. Well, um, one thing I, I want to do if we have time, but um, if anyone has more questions, please interrupt me, um, is I just kind of wanted to demo really quick the ghost install thing in Reclaim Cloud just to kind of show that. Um, partially because I am I spent a lot of time on it, so I'm sort of proud of it. Um, <laughs> but also I think it's kind of cool to see that it is pretty easy to get started if you haven't uh, seen anything like it before. Oops, let me share my screen here. So um, uh, let me... So um, if you are uh, logged into reclaim.cloud, you just go to the marketplace. Um, and then under uh, content management, there's ghost. And so you can set an environment name, which will define what your um, reclaim cloud URL is. So this is the URL you can visit ghost at if you don't map a domain to it um, or, or before you map a domain to it. So I'll just make this one. We'll call it Taylor Ghost. 
leave it in the Canada region and I'll leave the name there and hit install. And it will take a little bit. It takes like a good three, four minutes to install because it's creating a server. It's um, updating, uh, making sure packages are configured on the server, updating things properly. Then it's actually pulling the Docker images for Ghost because we run um, this in to uh, it via Docker to kind of make um, a lot of this really easy to manage long term. Um, I make this joke every single time I do a Reclaim Cloud demo, we're going to continue. I've got a cooking show situation going on here. While that bakes in the oven, I've got this one already done, um, and we can take a look at it. Um, so this is one I made, I don't know, I think like a week ago or so. Um, but um, when it's all set and installed, um, it will automatically have an IP address attached um, because... Most people, I think, actually wanting to run Ghost are going to want to map a domain. And to map a domain, you will need that IP address. Um, and the kind of cool thing about this is in the um, add-ons menu, if I hover over this here, um, here's all the stuff you have to manage Ghost itself. And it's really all you should need. Um, so there's a button that will pull updates for Ghost. You can just hit update. It's going to ask you if you want to update. <laughs> um, and uh, if I click yes, it'll update. Um, and then it will restart Ghost to make sure it's running the latest uh, versions of updates. Um, there's a button here to set up mail settings. And so if I hit configure in here, there's nothing in here. Um, but this is where you could set up SMTP or Mailgun. Um, and I do have that uh, documented. Um, and in our course, too, we go over setting up Mailgun in, in particular. Um, but basically, you just would put in your credential, uh, whatever you want here. So let's say I wanted to send mail from, you know, uh, taylor at ghost.jaden.me. Let's say that's where I have it. You would then put in your uh, username and password for Mailgun. One password is being annoying right now. Um, if I was using Mailgun, it would be smtp.mailgun.org. I'd put the port in that Mailgun gives me. I would, and then the service and transport are, whoops our SMTP. And I basically I'll click apply. And it's just going to set those uh, settings. And again, restart Ghost, so it's using them. And then the last one is um, domain configuration here. And this one lets you change the domain address, do, the domain name that um, Ghost is going to load on. So you do have to point in a record in your DNS to do this. So um, I would need that IP address, I would go to my cPanel, um, and let me do that really quick. So I would go in my DNS zone editor, and then I could add an A record. So let's say I wanted ghost demo Jaden.me. Um, and I would paste that IP address from Reclaim Cloud in there. So that's, again, that's over, over here. Uh, let's just, yeah, I did copy the right one, and I'll add an A record. Um, now, that particular one, I believe I already used. <laughs> um, so I'm going to not actually hit the, the button on this um, in doing that, but um, just because I use that for some of stuff with our Ghost course. But... Um, but that's basically what it would entail. Um, and then over here, I would put in, you know, whatever domain name I set up. So ghostdemo.jaden.me, and I'd hit apply. Um, and that's kind of it. It's, it's pretty quick and easy to do. It handles HTTPS automatically um, with that setup there. In fact, there, there is no way not to do it. Like our installer is assuming you want to run it on HTTPS because frankly, in 2022, you really... You can't really run a website not on HTTPS, especially not a new one. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how you manage that. Um, over here is now my new install I just did. So let's check out what that one's doing. Uh, potentially security issue. Interesting. Oh, you know what? I did a 
I, I have a problem here in that I made taylor-ghost.ca.reclaimcloud already once today. So it's got a conflicting security uh, SSL cert. So here I will demo in this case, um, setting up an actual domain name for this. So let me grab that IP address. I'll go into my zone editor. Let's do um, community chat ghost.jaden.me something I definitely haven't used before. And I'll go over here. It'll take a little bit. And when I click on this, it probably, or when I try to visit the URL I just said, it probably won't work right away because it does need a little bit of time to actually uh, restart and issue the cert and everything. It does take it like a good 30 seconds um, to get all started up and everything, but um, then we're golden. Um, there we go. So, um, yeah. So, that is, um, you know, the, the DNS bits, the one thing, like a lot of people um, are, that can be tricky, but um, hopefully looking at our documentation, it should make it pretty clear, but really just have to take the IP address, put it in, give it a, an A record, and then you tell Ghost what domain it should be loading at, and then you're all set. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully that makes it easy for folks to try. And um, you know, log into it, see what you think of Ghost. I'm really curious. I'd love to see people trying Ghost out and kind of, I don't know. I know I just said I don't like putting two tools up to, next to each other, but I'm, I'm always interested when you think about the use cases and actually look at the interface and stuff to see what people think because I'm of two minds always when I'm using this um, I, Ghost. I'm always like, oh, I love how simple this is. And then eventually I run into something that WordPress has built in or has a plugin for, and I go, okay, so that ghost doesn't do. Um, and that's not really a downside. It's just knowing the what the tool's designed for and what its limits are. But yeah, um, definitely chat about that in the forum or Discord or something. I'd be curious to see what people think if they can try it out. So, um, got like a minute left so um i think we're gonna wrap up here in a second but um and i'll probably stop the recording in a second but if anyone has other questions or things they want to talk about feel free to hang out for a few minutes so uh thanks everybody <laughs>